Hi guys, Obsidian Ant recently did a video where he tried out a VR headset and talked about the sense of scale that you get when you play Elite Dangerous in that way, taking off in a station for example or landing. Now, most of us aren't playing in VR, I think, but still, a sense of scale in Elite I think is really important to appreciating the scope of the game and that's something that I'm exploring in this series. I went to a fairly ordinary ice world, about 65 light years from Sol, to test out some methods I've been thinking of to get a sense of scale in our experience of the Elite Galaxy. Alright, so, hashtag nuggets for science here. Um, I managed to get a nugget right under my tire. You can see the precise width here. About three quarters of the width of the tire there, Nugget. You can see this is one of the less shiny ones. Um, phosphorus, nickel and so on are of this type. Okay, we've got another Nugget under here. Again, it's only slightly reflective. Let me get you the exact chemicals on these. So, it's it's fo that was phosphorus we were looking at then. Oh, nice. So, we found selenium here. How long it takes these to fall down in the 0 0.04 gravity. Let's have a close look at this one then. This is our nugget of selenium. Again, same texture, faintly reflective. Let's scoop it. We're just on this eastern edge of this fissure. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance westward by driving across it. And we're going to do this as a way of finding out whether the odometer is reliable. Now, we're going to run some numbers on this. Um, the latitude is 13.7635, longitude 107.7, and we're going to drive at a direct heading of 270 degrees. Now you can see on the odometer there it says 406 kilometers traveled. So when we get to the other side of this canyon, we're going to see how many kilometers it thinks we've gone and then we're going to compare it to the latitude and longitude so let's go we'll get a little screeny at the top of this canyon because it's uh it's quite a nice sight not bad for a plain old ice world eh now it's fairly important that i don't smash over loads of stuff because i think the odometer is as odometers do going to take its measurement from wheel rotations so that might include things like if I do a lot of flying through the air and my wheels aren't on the surface, that might count against it, so I shouldn't probably do stuff like this. However, in the future it might be they have a better method of, um, of measuring distance from an SRV. This is all stuff we're going to put to the test and find out. That's the view on the slope looking east. And let's pan round to the view west and you can see that the landscape takes a dip down before rising up again on the other side. And there seems to be something down there on the surface. I can see it now. Looks like it could be a nav beacon. A crash nav beacon like we saw before. It's only a small deviation from our course. So we'll go ahead and do it. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, it's been defended. Eh. And now we can get some data. Nice. Let's have a little look on our map and see what the location of this one is. So we actually um, appear to be measured in the exact same spot according to this map, but I wonder whether its increments of movement are quite large, so it might be that when we make certain progress across, it'll just suddenly put us further over. Again, it's something to investigate. Oh, this is the canyon. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, that is definitely the edge of the canyon. <laughs> right, let's just roll with it. Literally. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I'm thinking I was going down the side of the canyon already, but uh, nope. That was definitely a drop. And yeah, there you go. So now we can't see the star anymore, so... 
We're definitely lower down. You can see the sunlight on the, the hills there. I've been calling it a canyon, but actually this depression uh, is what would be known as a fossa or a fossae, uh, if it's plural. And on moons like Enceladus around Saturn and on Mars as well, they've found these depressions. They're the result of tectonic forces. And fossa just means a, a shallow ditch. And, and that's what it is. Uh, even though it was quite extreme for my SRV to traverse, this actually wasn't particularly deep. I couldn't find any record of a name being given to features on this moon, so I decided to call it the Jorvik Fossa, because there's a river in the city where I live called the Foss. By the time I reached this feature, my odometer was showing that I'd covered 9 kilometers, and the difference in longitude and latitude showed 8.04 kilometers. So given the short detour to look at the nav beacon, that's a pretty close correlation between the two methods and shows that the latitude longitude method, at least on a direct heading, works very well. I'll put a link to the Google document in my very simple spreadsheet um, so you can take a look and make any suggestions and see uh, what calculations I'm using to, to do this kind of measurement. Next time we'll continue field testing and trying some different ideas about making measurements and moving towards mapping planetary surfaces. I've done some really interesting reading around geographical information systems which I think can probably be used to stitch together images and then make maps or even three-dimensional maps of planetary surfaces in Elite. So I'm very, very excited about that. As ever, see you next time and keep exploring.